What's up guys? My name is Khan and we're back today with more scrap mechanic and today we're looking at this epic engine that I built and the only reason this is possible is because of those things over there. So I want to talk about what those are. I've learned a few new concepts from you guys in the comments and oh my god, these concepts are amazing. Now there's still a lot of stuff we got to learn about how scrap mechanic works and how to make better piston engines, but uh, this is a V8. I haven't sped it up yet. I haven't put it on the dyno. I have no idea how it's going to work. But you can see it is in fact a V8. It's got eight pistons driving the motion and it has got, uh, yeah, it's got a, a big V of them. So they're 90 degree offset. This thing is a monster. And you can see, look at this. We've got, we've got all sorts of cool stuff going on. We got a bearing here. This is a pass through. It's just ridiculous. It's super strong. Um, and actually, oh my God, I didn't balance the crank. I need to, I need to balance the crank. Everyone complains that I don't balance the crank. So we should do something like this on every single one to balance out the weight of the uh, the other pipe pieces around the crank. So now we'd have a perfectly balanced crank. But anyway, this all works in a really, really cool way. You'll notice we don't even have any bearings on the drive shaft here. We're only using pistons. So again, two concepts that you guys taught me. Really, really cool stuff. I love reading your comments and learning all sorts of new ways to make cool piston engines. And uh, I actually, they're, they're pretty cool. These are these are concepts I don't think I would ever have figured out on myself if you guys didn't actually leave the comments and let me know. And, and we've got some other cool stuff that I got to get into too. There's some transmission stuff. I've been talking with a few people and uh, there's ways to make some crazy like clutch mechanisms. I mean, I think you guys have seen it in the best builds. We can use two bearings. I also got a lot of comments of people who asked, why don't you just build the drive shaft 90 degrees? Why do you have to do all this rotation with bearings and stuff? And if anybody hasn't played Scrap Mechanic before, it's a pretty simple reason. Everything in Scrap Mechanic has to be able to be built on the lift. And you can see on the lift, everything is sort of like aligned to the grid. So when we want to move something off the grid or 90 degrees, there's no way we could build this sort of mechanism with the pistons attached you know, at a 90 degree angle and then also be attached up here. You know what I mean? So it's all about building in Scrap Mechanic and the way you build stuff. And that's why, you know, we have to do sort of some weird things. But anyway, we'll just let this run. And uh, I'm excited to, to really crank this up to full speed and tune this and see what happens. But the first thing I want to show you guys is a pass through. And it's really really quite amazing this is like revolutionary so you guys might have seen it before i did do some axles where i would have a bearing on either side and i would have a piston that would clip through the uh, contact point kind of like this and this allows us to you can see we can translate rotational motion from the engine through this axle but it's actually attached this is like having a through bearing or something in real life or like you know a sleeve in real life and and we can actually set that up and it's wicked so this is really what it is and you'll notice it looks like we've got a piston just floating here with two bearings but in fact if we hit this they both rotate, you can see, but they're still attached to a rigid contact point. It's wicked cool. And these are really, really easy to build. Um, you know, again, not my idea, not my creation. Someone else just showed me this stuff, and I think it's absolutely amazing. And uh, here we go. So all you got to do, really, is just, you know, you place down your little pillar, right? And then, of course, we can put down, like, our, our pipe piece or whatever. It doesn't matter. Put down our pipe piece, and we put down our bearings on either sides. I'm not sure if this would work with a block. It probably could work with a block, but it'd be a little bit... No, no, I think it has to be a pipe piece. I'm not sure, though. But it would be... could be a little bit difficult to, uh, to align this if it was a block. Because it'd be hard to see the piston inside the block. But anyway, then we take a pipe piece here. Put it like this. And here's where the magic happens. Scrap Mechanic lets you do some stupid stuff. Like, take your lift and push that out of the way. And then you can put a, a piston on that. And now, all of a sudden, we have a piston inside this. Now, it's not done yet because we need the piston to be attached to whatever's on the side of this bearing. So what we do is we break this off, we break this off, we take this piece, we put it on a lift, and now when we have something on a lift, in Scrap Mechanic, uh, if you have like a piston and a bearing on a lift and you attach a pipe to both of them, it'll weld it to both sides, which is what happens there. So it actually attached that, that pipe piece here to both this piston and this bearing, which means now when we take this and we, let's say, you know, weld it back to whatever, it doesn't really matter, now we can put something on this side, and if we do, and we put another thing on this side, it should be a, uh, a perfect pass-through. And there you go. So now we could continue to attach stuff to this pipe. See on the top here? There we go. And continue to build off that axle. No problem. And the bearing will just free spin through that. And apparently this is a really, really good system. Obviously, we don't have any, like, offset weight on the drive axle. I mean, it's wobbling now because I built these two these two offset weights. But, you know, if we make this uh, even here, uh, or, or not, yeah, if we make this even, thank you, and then... There we go, right? Now it's now it should be pretty smooth. Yeah, look, look at that. 
That's amazing. So anyway, wicked cool stuff. We can use this for all sorts of cool things. Anyway, so that's pass-throughs. Wicked concept. If you're not using it, apparently you're just obsolete. This is what the comments tell me. And oh my god, this thing's amazing. And, and I have people who are messaging me all the time and telling me all these different things about Piston Engines. And I love it. Because like, I'm learning so much. And like I say to everybody, you know, I want to kind of learn at a, at a pace. I don't want to just be, you know, handed a fully functional Piston Engine to be like, here you go, this is the this is the engine, this is the best thing you could possibly do. I kind of enjoy the process of like building up our, our repertoire of skills slowly but surely. And you know, like I never would have been able to make this engine, you know, a month ago. And it's just awesome that I'm, I'm finally learning how to use scrap mechanic more effectively. And I know there's some things wrong with this still. For example, a lot of people have been telling me too, the uh, the logic gates is bad. You shouldn't, you shouldn't use logic gates, it throws off the timing. You can actually control the position of the timing wheel to start, stop your engine and turn it backwards or forwards. And uh, we gotta we gotta get into that at some point in time. That's a that's a whole other whole other topic of discussion. But yeah, I should not have logic gates here. They add a delay and they make everything terrible. But um, you know, I'm I'm still a noob, so here we are. Anyway, the second concept is this. I don't really know what to call it. This one is a little bit more complicated. I think it's kind of amazing. You can't build this in vanilla unless you do some blueprint editing and blueprint editing for those who don't know it's pretty simple scrap mechanic stores all your blueprints in uh, a file on your computer and you can actually take that file open it in like a word editor a text editor or whatever and you can edit the text in the file and it will actually edit the blueprint in the game and then you could you know you can reload it off your lift so every time you go on your lift and you save something this actually just gets stored as a file on your computer and then you can just edit it however you want and if you edit the coordinates or of the blocks correctly then you could do really stupid stuff so why this is cool is because this is a drive shaft that rotates 90 degrees without us needing bearings and you can do it with pistons and like again Never would have found this in a million years without you guys in the comments. This is insane that this works, and that's what this thing uses. So you'll notice we have these pistons that are kind of used as pass-through pistons, but really, that's not what they're there for. They're there because they rotate 90 degrees without using a bearing, and it's kind of insane how it works. So look at this. If we take this and we put it on a lift, both of the, the, the pipe pieces are aligned. You can see that, right? They're both, they're both pointing straight at us. As soon as we take this off the lift, it rotates 90 degrees, and that is a rigid... 90 degree connection like if i take this and i i weld this like this look 90 degrees if i try and hit this with my hammer there is no give on this there's nothing there's like no push off the like this piston is super strong and it goes to a perfect 90 degrees this is insane that this exists and then of course you know i did the same thing and expanded it out and that's a drive shaft look with five pieces four separations and look as soon as you take it off the lift 90 degrees so this gets rid of the entire issue of needing bearing locks or any of that nonsense on the drive shaft. You just have this 90 degree piston set up and, and that's just nuts. So I obviously, I saved this on my lift and I saved this. Now the way this works, I again, had to be explained to me and I'm still not great. So if I say something wrong, I do apologize. But apparently the way this works is that a piston is made up of two parts. You have the front end and the back end, the parent and the child actually. And if you look at it, the parent has some coordinates according to the world grid when you place it down. So when I take this piston and I place it, the game says, okay, the parent X, Y, Z axis is in some direction, or I think it's X and Z is what it uses, and the Y axis, it just calculates. So it says, okay, this, this piston is facing in some direction, X, Y, whatever. Um, if you look at the whole world of scrap mechanic, there is an X, Y coordinate grid. I believe it's, uh, it's like, what, X is that way or something, or that way? I don't know, X and Y are flat, Z is up. And of course, it coordinates and it says, okay, XYZ of the starting point and XYZ of the ending point. Now, for some reason in the game, the scrap mechanic blueprints store the XYZ of the parent and the child different. They store them as two sets of numbers instead of one set of numbers. Basically, in the blueprint file, and again, I'm not an expert on how this works, but in the blueprint file, you'll have x-axis A, x-axis B, and then I think you have z-axis A and z-axis B, and that represents the, the axes of each of these two parts. And by default, they're all the same numbers. So you have like x-axis A will be, let's say, 1, 2, or 3, which represents, uh, you know, x, y, or z axis in the world grid. And the other one will be 1, 2, or 3 as well. But you can change them. So you can open up the blueprint file, and in this case, x-axis a was 2 and x-axis b was 2 and so all I did to change this was I took x-axis b and I changed the number from a 2 to a 3 in the blueprint file saved it and when I did that it went from this to that and it rotated it 90 degrees and then with this one did the same thing just repeated it a bunch of times and it rotates it 90 degrees automatically so we're literally just manipulating the coordinates of this end position relative to the start position and the game rotates it now 
I don't, there's some math and science to it. And it's like, uh, the, the guy I was talking to about it, he was like, you know what, if like X axis A is like two, you can say it's always supposed to be like a certain number, like one or three. To be honest, when I was doing this, I just opened up the blueprint file and I just kind of like kept changing X axis B until the number worked. So like X axis A was two. I just changed X axis B to three or I changed it to one originally. And then it just freaked out. The game kind of exploded because all of a sudden the child is in some weird orientation that a piston doesn't work with. But if you get it right and you get the number right, this happens and it rotates 90 degrees right off the bat. It's kind of nuts. So anyway, putting all that together, we end up with this wicked engine. And the nice thing about this is now if I look, Everything is perfectly straight on the uh, on the thing. Look, all the pistons are aligned. Everything's attached. It's all really easy. We've got a nice little V set up here. We got all the pistons attached to the same crank. And then, of course, if we remove it, they instantly rotate all of those 90 degrees without bearings. I know it's kind of a mess when you look at all the dots because there's all these other bearings, but there's no bearings on the drive shaft itself, which is just unbelievably cool. So that's what we end up with a wicked wicked cool system anyway let's uh we've, we spent too much time explaining how this works i think it's really cool of course if you guys got other tips and tricks for piston engines put them down in the comments down below i love reading about these new things and learning these new techniques i didn't know either of these techniques like a month ago and now it's just i i don't i can't not build with them i mean if you're making a drive shaft for a car that you need to attach to the car body like how can you not use a pass-through and you can build a pass-through in vanilla without even needing any editing, anything whatsoever. This is a little bit more complicated, but again, you just make this once, you save it once, and now look, if I go on my on my blueprint, I've got a drive shaft with 90 degrees, you know, just ready to go for four, and I could make a longer one for eight, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of cool that you can do this kind of stuff. Anyway, we're gonna speed this guy up. I haven't actually tested this past this speed here. I have no idea what it's gonna do, how it's gonna perform. I'm really excited. I've, I've never built a V piston engine before. That's, uh, that's been good, and, uh, Okay, it's a little chunky. Little chunky. We gotta make some adjustments. Maybe what's it at zero? That's worse. About 15. That's even worse. Okay, what about negative 30? Ooh, that gets smoother. Negative 45. Oh, that gets way smoother. Negative 60. Oh my god, it has enough torque. It rotates itself. Are you serious? Is it actually torquing itself? Like that's that is okay. We need we need it. We need to attach this to the ground. Hold on a minute. That looks pretty good. I mean, that's pretty smooth. Look at how smooth the shaft is. This is why you guys kept telling me to build balanced shafts. I know I need a flywheel as well, but like even just having those extra little pipe pieces on the shaft to balance the weight, like that's kind of insane. Like look at how smooth that rotation is. And the pass-through obviously helps. It keeps everything, you know, aligned and secure without losing power and stuff. This is, this is actually wicked cool. All right, we got to put it on the dyno, obviously. What if I go to like 75? Oh, that looks so smooth at 75. What about all the way to 90? Oh, that looks even faster. Oh my god. this I, I painted the timing wheel in a different position. That's why we're not using the 55 degree stuff. I just kind of painted it however. 105. 120. Oh, no. It goes back to being chunky. A little chunky. 105 seems like the number. Man, this thing is so cool. Like, think about it. This is like an inline four, but with another inline four, 90 degree offset to it. And, uh, yeah, this is just going to be so powerful. I can already predict it. I mean, we're going to get at least double the torque of the standard inline four, right? You got two pistons pushing instead of one. And on top of that, we got always at least two pistons active, no matter what the position of the drive shaft is. So this is just insane. Most likely you have four active. Actually, no, you always have four active. That's right. You always have four active. They're just offset by 90 degrees from the one set to the other. Anyway, this is, this is wicked cool stuff. That has so much torque. That is just insane. All right, we got to attach this to the thing. Or right, we're going to have to mount it kind of sideways. Because I got to weld it to the dyno, so it's going to look stupid. Another thing, too, I kind of misspoke in the last video. You guys were talking about it. I, uh, I made a comment, and I said that piston engines kind of feel like two strokes. Um, because, you know, we're not we're not doing all the cycles. That's, that's sort of incorrect. Um, a piston engine, as you guys corrected me with, it's more like a steam engine. And that actually makes more sense. Because if you think about it, a piston engine in the game, it fires in both directions. It doesn't just fire when you go down. It also fires when it comes back up. Like, it, it retracts with force. And that's pretty much what a steam engine does, right? It's a, a, a double-action steam engine. Whereas if a two-stroke only fires when it's pushing, uh, same like a four-stroke. And, uh, you know, we're not, we're not doing that. Anyway, this is a pretty interesting looking V. Obviously, it's kind of mounted angle, but we need, we need this. It's, yeah, it is what it is. All right, so let's turn that on. That's, that's great. That is actually great. 
It only gets up to 218. Okay. Average speed 218. That's interesting. This isn't pushing that 300 limit. I'm sure there's many, many reasons why. Probably including the logic gates and or the timing. Uh, what if I go to 90? Does that make it go faster? Oh, 90 does go faster. Okay. We're going to just have to play. I just want to play around a little bit. I just want to see 230s. See, for me, visually, it looked chunkier at 60 than it, but this is why you need a dyno, because it's really hard to tell visually how the RPM actually is compared to what it is, 240. Okay, so the, the peak point for this engine is pretty much around 60 degrees, it seems. All right, let's crank her up. Let's see what happens. 267 RPM. Boom. Input reversed. What? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did my engine just magically reverse itself? Like, half it was, like, firing, and then what the heck happened? A lot of people have been saying that what I actually need to do is make the piston engine so that as it, you know, accelerates, it changes its position. Ideally, we need the timing wheel to be at, like, a zero position that stops the engine. Wow, really? This is... That's, that's all you generated? 73 horsepower at 3,200 newton meters of torque? Hmm, that's interesting. It's it's definitely the most powerful engine I've ever built. 73 horsepower on a V8. That's pretty sad, though, that we've got a V8 with 73 horsepower. 3,200 newton meters RPM. It's not an exact double. Yeah, that's just that's just it getting... I don't know what that's doing. That's just it getting stuck. But 3,200 newton meters, my inline four does 2,000 newton meters. But again, this, this comes down to the understanding of the timing wheel. I think we need to spend a lot more time working on the timing wheel, the encoding wheel, the thing that actually fires the engine and a lot of you guys have said too not to have this timing wheel right next to the sensors because apparently that causes friction i don't know if that's true my understanding was that there wasn't friction between two creations that are attached together like this um there is if they're not like if they're separate creations there's friction but there isn't if they're they're not i don't know if that's true or not let me know in the comments down below if it is um my understanding is that this doesn't actually matter but if it does, then I guess we can start putting a gap on it. Although I do see a lot of piston engines on the workshop that don't have a gap between the sensors and the timing wheel. So I don't I don't really know uh, what to think of that. This is interesting though. 105. 120, that looks worse. What if I go to just a straight 90? Turn it off, turn it on. Oh, it's so hard to tune piston engines. I mean, I love it, but man, is it difficult. Let's start this up. Uh, start it up? No, maybe? Yes, there we go. Yeah, at 90 degrees, it seems to, like, do better under load. 71, 72, 73, 72. Average power. Max power, 73 horsepower, 4,000 newton meters. See, at 90, it got 1,000 newton meters more torque before it stalled out. Whereas compared to at 105, it stalled out a lot quicker. The timing wheel... This is honestly, I think if you wanted to make the ideal piston engine, you need the timing wheel to change based on like the RPM of the engine, but then also based on load. Like as the engine applies more load, it needs a different timing setup. Although maybe RPM drives that same thing. If you just adjust it based on the RPM, then, you know, as the engine slows down under load, then the timing wheel adjusts. But then we got to look at how do you live a change the timing wheel with a controller bearing based on the speed of this without using mods. I mean, you could use a mod, we could use like, um, there's an XO meter in the mod pack that measures rotational speed, and we could have that, you know, set to a, an angle on a smart thing or whatever. But the idea behind these piston engines has sort of always been to maintain them in a vanilla sort of state. Like, I mean, obviously the dyno is not vanilla, but the whole engine is. There's nothing in this engine that you can't spawn without a single mod. So that's sort of the point of it. But uh, either way, interesting how 15 degrees, yeah, input reversed. I know, that's fine. But yeah, 15 degrees makes all the difference with the torque. We go from 90 to 105 on the timing wheel, and then all of a sudden the torque gets an extra thousand newton meters. Ooh, this one's, this one sucks. Man, and then see, and now it gets a different result because it didn't start from acceleration. It started from, oh boy. Trying to understand how this works is just like, like it's ridiculous. So there we go, we gotta, we gotta let it get up to speed first. And then if we start it this time, do we get the same thing? Max torque, max power. Should be 4,000, right? We just got to let it get up to full speed before we actually apply it. I think is how this goes. Yeah, look at that. That's so crazy. 73 horsepower. 
That's insane. So if you don't let it get up to speed before you apply the load, as it's so I timing, we need to spend a lot of time working on timing. If you guys have suggestions for timing wheels, let me know in the comments down below. This is this is gonna be the make or break situation. You could make the best piston engine in the world, and if your timing is not correct, that thing is never gonna get the performance it should. I mean, we just we just proved that. You get a thousand newt meter difference with just a slight angle change on that one wheel on the one side. So, I mean, that's that's just absolutely critical. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know uh, what other things you want to see in Scrap Mechanic. Uh, we're going to start working on some other things at some point here as well. I, I, I really love these engines. I'm on, like, the quest to make the best piston engine. I should probably go and do a couple more of those piston engine challenges. Maybe not the expert level ones, but I think we could probably do, like, the basic level speed one and maybe even the basic level hill climb one with uh with some of the piston engine knowledge we have now we do need to sort of have a transmission to deliver power to the road but i think we could probably do just like a standard plus gear to a plus gear to make like a differential and uh or not even a differential just like a you know like a, just a transaxle really you know something that takes the power from horizontal and moves it vertical you know moves it to a 90 degree angle um to drive both wheels i feel like we could do that and put in like an i4 piston engine and, you know, if we get an i4 at 300 RPM with another, uh, what is it, the trammel gear, then we could make it go, like, 600 RPM at the wheels. And if we're doing 600 RPM at the wheels, I feel like we'll beat the first speed challenge. No problem. So maybe we'll have to try that. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.